the other day, Bruce Bartlett, who was, uh, used to work for Ron, then I'm sorry to say worked for George Bush the first, uh, but Bruce had a, a column and he said he thought that Ron, at the very least, was gonna be the Gene McCarthy of this era, and that Gene McCarthy changed uh, the politics of the Democratic Party for decades. Um, I think th I, I, there's no telling where, uh, where Ron is gonna go. Um, if, I, I think he's already had a huge effect for good. I think he's gonna have even a bigger effect for good as to what's gonna happen politically. Um, my, my own guess is I, I think they're not gonna have a candidate at the end of the primary season. There's not gonna be anybody with a, with a majority. So there's gonna be a very interesting five or six months before the convention. Um, people love Ron Paul. I don't know if you saw, saw him on the Bill Maher show the other night. It's a very liberal, young audience. And uh, anytime anybody said anything that was just slightly um, critical of Ron, this was Ben Affleck and uh, P.G. O'Rourke, the audience starts chanting, Ron Paul, Ron Paul, Ron Paul. <laughs> and Maher himself said he'd never seen a Republican greeted like this. They were just cheering to the, the rafters. Young people love him. Um, here he is, the oldest candidate in the race. He's older than McCain, although, of course, in far better shape than McCain. <laughs> he's a great athlete, by the way, Ron Paul, in addition to all the other things about him. Um, and he's touched the hearts of young people like, no, I've never seen anything like this, maybe since Gene McCarthy. I'm, I, uh, I worked for Gene McCarthy myself at a very low-level act you know, thing, and I, uh, young, young people loved him, but Ron is uh, um, so far above Gene McCarthy, and uh, just, uh, I just, I think anything's possible if, if he were to get the nomination and were to be elected, which, you know, we have to think this is unlikely but not impossible, um, I think that would mean just a huge surge of, of uh, public opinion. And, and they, the government can't actually stand against public opinion. As uh, Philip Wede and Hume and Mises and Rothbard and, and, and others have shown, you know, government is a, is a small minority um, the parasite uh, can't be too big or it can't live off the host. It's always a minority and they're constantly concerned about um, keeping the host uh, uh, unknowing and uh, happy to give to, uh, to support them. Um, they can't actually stand against a change in, in uh, the climate of opinion. So if something that would be a revolution in the climate of opinion, I think Ron Paul is already bringing out a revolution in the climate of opinion. I feel very uh, confident and very optimistic about the changes that Ron is, is already had been responsible for. I think uh, it's just you know, hugely thrilling and heartening and um, I think the establishment, the elites are terrified. They don't know how to handle him. They tried to uh, uh, keep him out of the future debates and the response was so overwhelming that they had to back off. Remember that the chairman of the Michigan Republican Party started off by saying he should be kicked out of future debates. But this is a guy who, of course, never hears from anybody. The lazy Michigan Republican headquarters, you know, the cobwebs on the phone and so forth. <laughs> well, all of a sudden, from the whole world, and the Ron Paul support is worldwide, um, uh, calls and emails, people started posting on the web his personal cell phone, <laughs> his wife's cell phone number, you know. So, so he finally backed off and uh, said, well, I don't actually want to keep anybody out of the debate, so well, th thanks a lot. Um, so uh, Howard Kurtz, who was the Washington Post media critic, was on uh, Reliable Sources on CNN on Sunday morning, a couple of weeks ago said, shouldn't we keep these uh, fringe candidates like Ron Paul out of the future debates? And let me, he has a question every week where he asks for emails. And um, so the next week he gets on and he's up, he's, sort of got a hangdog look of, and uh, discouraged and angry that uh, the people had disagreed with him and he said he was gonna read three typical emails and which means, uh, uh, whoop, okay, five minutes, thank you. So the first one was, uh, what do you mean keep Ron Paul out of the debates? He said, I'm, I'm, a, I'm Japanese and I can tell you all my friends in Japan, we just wanna hear about Ron Paul. <laughs> and then the next guy said, uh, so you people in the media, before any votes, before any primaries, you want to tell us who should be the candidates? You know? And then the third guy said, oh, so you want only the bought and paid for candidates to be up there, huh? <laughs> so Kurt said, oh, well, they all have to get candidate contributions. They're all bought and paid for. And, well, not quite Howard, right? Some of them are bought and paid for. Ron Paul is not bought and paid for. So here, because of the internet and because of people's enthusiasm, spontaneously, uh, welling up all over the country and all over the world. He doesn't actually need uh, $50 million. He doesn't, uh, 
he doesn't actually need to be able to buy uh, uh, statewide TV in California and the similar very expensive. Uh, he doesn't need 120 paid staffers like the McCain campaign has or the 150 that, uh, that uh, Mitt Romney has. Uh, so it's quite, quite an extraordinary moment. I think we're all going to be very glad that we were alive at this period. And uh, I'll just say that I'm very optimistic. And excuse the long answer. Thank you. This is a uh, philosophical question. It uh, relates to you and the preceding two speakers. Uh, many years ago in the 50s, my first full-length uh, book I read about libertarians uh, was by Leonard E. Reed, uh, Government, an Ideal Concept, which I now consider somewhat conservative. Uh, a few years later, uh, probably uh, for a new liberty by Rothbard, uh, I read that uh, uh, a self-organizing system, which he labeled as uh, anarchy, uh, was the way to go. Uh, how, do you, uh, how do you read this? Well, I'm a Rothbardian, and uh, yeah. Murray called himself not an anarchist, but an anarcho-capitalist, because, of course, most of the people who call themselves anarchists believe that in the absence of a state, we'd have communism. Uh, of course, <laughs> not Murray's view is Murray's view, as it is mine, that private property um, is uh, uh, inherent in the human, in the human con uh, construction. This is not something imposed by evil capitalists or whatever, but it's, it's part, of, part of human nature. Um, I knew Leonard Reed, and Leonard Reed was a great man, and uh, a man to, to whom we all owe uh, a tremendous amount for his establishment of the Foundation for Economic Education, what he did for Ludwig von Mises, and many other things. Um, that particular book is not, I'll just say it's not my favorite one of Leonard's. I, I don't find it a persuasive book. Very tough to come up as a libertarian with reasons for government. I mean, it's actually very tough to, uh, uh, to prove that such an institution should exist, and I, I would say that he didn't, he didn't do it in that book. Um, but I think this is a very tiny, you know, every, uh, Leonard was a great champion of liberty and uh, uh, a great man, and, and uh, I'm, sure, I'm sure glad I knew him. And I, I think uh, one of the great things about Bumper is he carries on Leonard's work. Uh, I know Bumper was inspired by him too, and uh, so uh, a lot of what Leonard Reed stood for, all the good things Leonard Reed stood for, uh, continue in a number of ways, but one of the ways they continue is in the, free, the Future of Freedom Foundation. Yes, sir. Not a question, but a comment. Just a reiteration. Leonard Reed, I remember him speaking about a remnant out there and why this convention here and people like yourself and the speakers that have come before you today as well as the ones that are going to come the rest of the day and the rest of the weekend and all of us here, how the impact that all of us have on our friends and neighbors, the importance of it, because you talk about Ron Paul's impact so far and how it's being spread all over the internet, all over the country. Don't ever let it be said. Things can change. Ideas do have consequences, as we all know. And we all have an important stake in this. And there is a remnant out there, and people are listening. They're getting tired of what's happening to them, and they're being impacted on a daily, daily basis. So I compliment you and compliment all of you for coming here today. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Mr. Rockwell, you did an, an excellent job of describing the left and the right, but I think most people in this country are non-ideological. How do we get them into our camp? Well, I think it's true, but uh, I, I would argue that everything, in, everything is done by minorities. Um, that is true, most people are not ideological, but ideology counts for everything, intellectuals count for everything, and um, ideas count for everything, and ideas do move I would uh, agree, do move history, but we don't actually have to get the majority of the population. All we have to get is some, uh, I don't know what, it, what the percentage is, but we have to get a significant minority. I think that's, uh, I think all the, the work, um, you know, we talk about John T. Flynn and Albert J. Nock and uh, Frank Chodorov and all the great, the great men of the old right and Mises and Rothbard and Hayek and Leonard Reed and all the others. Um, maybe all that work is coming to fruition. Maybe, uh, all that, uh, all that writing, all that thinking, all that uh, uh, discussion and teaching um, is happening, is coming to a great moment uh, with Ron Paul. I think, uh, I, I think we're from, in, from exciting times, and I better get off. Thank you all very much.